Que onda vatos? Thanks again for tuning in to yet another video. Infamous here, coming at you live from San Jose, California. Another beautiful day out here. Look at that. Another blue sky, west coast day. California. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the uh, topic of today's video. And maybe soon after, maybe today's ride. Uh, just wanted to kind of give you guys, you guys that are you know, new to Harley Davidson, you guys are looking at, you know, some soft tails, maybe a, a low rider, a low rider S, kind of like mine, soft tail, 114, beautiful machine, absolutely gorgeous. You guys are not going to regret buying this bike, but maybe you guys are looking at maybe doing some modifications, maybe you guys are uncomfortable with doing so. It's a brand new bike, $20,000. It's a lot of money, and yes, I, I understand, I get it. It's scary, it's frightening, you might break the bike, you might do something that, uh, that could be... Quite honestly, I'm going to tell you guys straight up, I was able to do all of this with no power tools, with no specialty tools, maybe except for the uh, the clutch. Uh, but you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in a bit. Just wrenches, uh, ratchets, sockets, your basic, uh, you know, Allen wrenches, um, you know, just your basic tools. You can get all of these tools at Chicago Freight. Is that what the place is called? Harbor Freight. Oh, Harbor Freight. Sorry, keep on calling it Chicago Freight. Uh, yeah, you, you could you could get all these tools. I have a video on the tools you need to kind of start building your bike, building your dream bike. But I'm gonna tell you straight up. Uh, you you know none of this is super difficult to do. And like I said, I did it in an area no bigger than maybe three by five. No bigger than three by five. No compressor. Like I said, no power tools. Uh, no air tools, nothing, you know, that dramatic. You could buy the, uh, you could buy the, uh, the owner's manual off of eBay, a digital copy, PDF format, for about 20 to $15. And just start studying, look at the videos, there's plenty of videos online, a lot of, you know, helpful tips out there. And I'm going to tell you the easiest installation so far on my build I'd say the easiest installation would be the C, and then soon after that, I'd probably say the uh, the Leather Pros. Someone on uh, Instagram and somebody on one of my other videos mentioned that they were having some fitment issue with these uh, with these Leather Pros, and that's when I kind of realized. He said uh, the gentleman I I can't remember uh, his name, but he mentioned that that uh, it's probably like half an inch the the heat uh, plate right here the heat protection plate uh, it seems to be touching on his stock exhaust so and you know somebody else also mentioned that earlier I say about a month or two ago and I guess I didn't fully understand the uh, the question or the comment so just a heads up I didn't mention that in my other video maybe that's why the easy mounts are so much easier is uh, because of that because you don't have to swap out the exhaust that's why the heritage is a staggered exhaust and then if you look at the spork light, it's also it's also a two into one stock. So you know it makes sense now. And you know looking at the other at the other bikes with saddlebags, you, you notice that the exhaust is staggered uh, on those other bikes. So just a heads up. Uh, if you go with these leather pros, you know that's not this video, but if you go with those with these leather pros, you are gonna have to do some extra work with the exhaust if you have a lowrider S. Or any of the other uh, stock, um, you know, stacked on top um, mufflers. Anyways, going back into the uh, the build, the most difficult installation on the bike. I think you guys can pretty much guess what that is by just looking at it. The uh, the risers. That was the most difficult part. Uh, that was the most you know frightening part only because it's you know it's got ABS and people have mentioned that if you don't believe the brakes uh, correctly you're you might be looking at locking up your your ABS and then uh, you know being stuck Ay, qué poca madre. It's, it's been I think it's been what 3,000 miles now since I've 
since I've changed the uh, the risers. And you know, Harley Davidson, they don't give you a lot of slack on these lines. Anything over five and a half inches, you're, you are gonna have to change your lines. And, and you know, I, I knew that. I knew that was gonna be the most difficult part. Once you start messing with it, start you know looking at the book, looking at the owner's manual, and then looking at videos, you, you know, you start building confidence and that's what you need to do. You have to, you know, start out small, maybe with the C, maybe, you know, something small, something that's not gonna overwhelm you, maybe the, uh, the pipes, and then work yourself up to the uh, up to the big you know the big part the big service which is the uh, the handlebars and I spoke to my dealership and they wanted a thousand four hundred in labor for the uh, for the <laughs> for the bars if you have the money and you don't have the time to do this then you know by all means go you know go do it at the dealership they'll do it for you they're certified they know what you know they know the measurements they know what's got to be done. Except for the 2021s, I believe a lot of the mechanics were surprised that they moved, you know, some some components, a couple parts. I'm not gonna get into it with the 2021s in this video, but yeah, I mean, they they know what they know what they're doing. They see these bikes eight hours, ten hours a day, six, seven days a week. They know these bikes inside out. And it, like I said, if you have the money, you don't have the time, then you know, go drop it off at the dealership. But as far as you know anybody else you know trying to do this trying to get started or trying to uh, see if they could do it and you know save yourself a, a, you know a lot of money we're talking about thousands and thousands of dollars that I saved by doing it myself so you know this is just me telling you guys you guys can do it I did it all right basic tools not a lot of space I don't even have you know the the bike lift or anything like that I was able to do it so yeah, going back to the most difficult part, you know, it's it's a combination of the handlebars of the risers, but overall, I, I think it was the brake line. This was a, a pain in the rear end to change, and it's mainly because of the uh, the the DOT4, the corrosive liquid in here for your brakes. It, it just gets everywhere. You really have to take your time, clean it out, make sure you don't drip it on your on your wheels or on your on your fender on you know on the paint because it's gonna <laughs> damage the paint it's super corrosive you're not supposed to get it on the bike and it's very difficult to uh, to do so so that you know that was one of the most difficult parts and I believe the clutch the clutch overall it wasn't too bad the clutch line I wish I had gotten the uh, the updated the new uh, quick quick adjust the one for the soft tails but uh, I got this kit from from Speed Kings, and I got the old school line, and it works. It works. It's not. It's not bad at all. Another time-consuming installation was the uh, was the uh, was the fairing. That was a that was some time-consuming, mainly just to kind of get it all to fit. It was very difficult to get it to align and fit. Most of these parts, they 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 bolt on pretty easily. Some of these parts are really going to have to crank down on, kind of like my. Uh, my engine guard had to, you know, force the uh, the bolts and everything to kind of align. That took a minute, but everything else you can do this at home. You don't have to pay a guy $140 an hour. He doesn't have to be certified. And if you're worried about a couple things, uh, Biking Bird, that's what he ended up doing. He was he was worried about doing the uh, the brake bleed on his Fat Bob. Yeah, on his Fat Bob. He was worried about doing the the the, uh, the ABS on his fat bob, so he took it to the dealership. I believe they charged him about an hour and a half or two hours for the uh, for the service. You can still save yourself quite a bit of money, a thousand four hundred bucks for a handlebar job like this. Uh, you do most of it, and if you're really worried about the the brakes, take that to the dealership. They'll do it for you, or take it to a service shop. They could also do it for you. ABS, you know, hardly these. This Harley Davidson ABS system it's is not uh, it's not anything special, all right? This ABS system it's it's just like on any other bike. You could take it to the service shop. They'll uh, bleed the brakes. There's no ECU. There's no special machine. Yes, they they might have a, a pump or or a vacuum machine, but there's no special machine for the uh, for the Harley Davidsons. They're all they all work the same. So I have a whole playlist for the uh, handlebars, but uh, you guys can do it. All right, and like I mentioned, it, it's good for you to start uh, getting familiar with your bike, with your investment. 
there's going to be a lot of you know plenty of more services you're going to have to get comfortable with and it's good for you to kind of get started on it uh you know get an idea of what makes this thing work yeah it's just uh you know watch the videos ask questions and just do your homework do your research get that uh, pdf format for the owner's manual and get started you know work take baby steps if you're new at this take baby steps and then work yourself up to the uh, to the big job so you guys just stay out there stay safe don't believe everything you read life's a risk get out there and ride later